Welcome back. You're watching Prime Property. I'm Nentara Rai. Earlier on the show, DLF said RBI's 50 basis point rate cut would undoubtedly boost sentiment, but it's unlikely to lead to a revival of the property market. I also reached out to Motilal Oswal to get its views and also if a decent price correction is on the cards. Can it be game changer? I have, uh, I'm not really sure about that. I think the impact will be more in the middle income housing where the buyers are more dependent on housing loan and uh, and their, their ability to borrow and buy uh, housing uh, goes up uh, in the interest rate cut. I'm not really sure it will make too much of impact into the higher end of the market in the luxury segment which is continue to face challenges because of the high prices. Uh, but interest rate uh, cut would definitely give a boost to real estate in short to long term. Now, Sharad, everyone has a different definition of premium housing, affordable housing. How are you defining it? So, uh, I think uh, there are three segments for me. One is low-cost housing, other is mid-income housing, and third is which is luxury or high-end. I look at more from a three to six thousand rupees a square feet uh, per square feet market, wherein I believe is the maximum demand. Uh, there is a fair bit of demand uh, at, at uh, low cost housing also which is sub 3000 but uh, there the margins are challenging in nature so this is the segment where there has a maximum demand uh, this is really the middle class of india uh, which which can really come and buy uh, if you look at bombay pro markets like bombay and delhi uh, there, there is the high end of the market which is i would say is anything more than 6000 rupees a square feet uh, which i will define as a high end We've talked about home loans. What about the builder's side of the story? You know, they can access cheaper debt. They can refinance that debt. Do you think they're going to pass on that benefit to the buyers? Unlikely. Uh, if you really see, there are, there are two parts to it. One, the overall cost of capital for a developer continues to be high. Unlike the housing uh, borrower where the interest rates are going to go sub-10, uh, reality is for a real estate developer is that his cost of borrowing over the life of the project is more like 18-20%. A 25 to 50 basis point there is probably not a significant cut. Second, I'm not really sure how much are the bank going to pass on the benefit while doing developer lending. Clearly, directionally for home loan lending, there would be benefits which will be passed on. Uh, I don't think so. I'm not really sure how much will be passed on by the banks while doing a developer lending. Third, there are a lot of other costs involved into it. Uh, to, to say that the property prices can come down because of interest rate cut for the developer, I don't think so that's going to be the case. DLF earlier on the show had said it expects the pain in the property market to continue for another four quarters. What's your outlook? Clearly the, the, uh, the pain is there in the real estate market and the way probably one has to look at it and to divide into two parts, residential and commercial separately, both the markets are looking uh, differently from each other. If you look at residential market, the market has been reeling under pressure for last two years because of low sales and largely the sales have been slow, uh, the velocities have been slow because of high property prices. Uh, there are also some of the markets like Delhi and Bombay, wherein the higher end of the market is much larger, uh, is feeling more pain uh, as compared to some of the southern part. My view is that the property prices will remain stagnant uh, in the mid-income housing for next couple of years and with, some, uh, with, with a price correction expected in the higher end of the market. Over a period of next two years, coupled with interest rate cut and the disposable income going up, what is currently not affordable will probably become affordable. So we are looking at a more of a time correction than a price correction in overall residential real estate market. I also believe there will be a fair bit of consolidation that can take place in this market with the price rise not happening over a period of three to five years. Uh, the smaller or mid-sized players will probably find it challenging. Uh, as far as the commercial market is concerned, commercial market really went through a challenging time between say 2009 to 2013. Now we are seeing the bottoms of the uh, vacancies and it's a matter of time with the, with the expectations of economy rebounding that these vacancies going, going up, uh, vacancies going down and in a matter of uh, say next couple of years the rentals going up. I would say commercial market looks better as an investment uh, than a residential at this point of time. I'm going to get to commercial real estate in just a bit, but this is something I'd ask DLF as well. Why don't builders just cut prices and try to revive demand? So I think we need to clearly understand the uh, distinction between time correction and price correction. Uh, if the prices have been stagnant for last two years and we are saying that it might remain stagnant for two more years, a property price is stagnant over a period of four or five years is a deep correction. Even if you put a cost of capital or return expectation around 15%, we are looking at a steep time correction. What we are also saying is that in addition to that, some of the markets where the property prices have really unaffordable, 
specifically in the higher end of the market we can see price correction as well uh, i think uh, the in the middle income housing which is between 3 and 6000 rupees a square feet uh, that we really cleanly focus on i don't think so there are too much margins to really prices to go down you are saying prices will stay stagnant for all those properties costing up to 6000 rupees a square foot beyond that there should be a price correction how much a uh, difficult to predict actually uh, uh, we whether there will be correction that can happen in terms of price or will be happen in terms of freebies and and lot of subvention schemes that we see but uh, i think anything between 10 to 15% will be a fair number to look at then from everything that you're saying why should anyone buy a property now so uh, like i clearly said that uh, when you were making uh, buying a residential property you need to distinguish whether you're making that as an investment or as an end user if you are an end user of a property this probably would be the best time in next one and a half two years to buy a property because you are expected to get a good deal on it uh, if you are looking from an investment perspective i think uh, that's where the struggle is it's a waiting game between the buyer and seller which is a developer and the buyer here and clearly when the higher end of the market uh, there is, seems to be pain expected people are waiting for it i want to now get back to commercial real estate you said investing in commercial real estate is a good idea how's that planning out and do you really get good yields because i thought it would be if you buy entire buildings of let's say it parks that's not really possible yeah so uh, the clear shift uh, from a direct investing perspective and when we are looking at investments in real estate we need to segregate between how a, uh, how an hni or a retail investor does versus an institutional investor institutional investors like us will continue to invest into residential properties not only we get good deals uh, with good developers in during these tough times uh, we also have access to the developers uh, project profit uh, unlike a retail investor or hni investor uh from outlook for a hni and retail investor clearly uh, commercial uh, looks better and this shift we are seeing over a period of last one year where the interest rate cuts were 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 expected the hni smart money started going more towards the commercial assets than into the residential and what have been the ticket sizes of all these investments you're talking about unfortunately there are in india now uh, with the category a offices the way they are built there are not too many small offices which are which are built uh, i would say anything between 25 to 100 crores uh, wherein wherein there is the possibility of leverage also coming along for a pre leased asset there has been a fair bit of capital which has been allocated by the hnis and in which cities is it delhi mumbai what Yeah so IT is the driver for commercial in India almost 75% of the asset class uh, in commercial is is IT so Bombay Bangalore and Pune but i would say bombay is also one market which is non IT and has been struggling in commercial space for last 6 years have been fair bit of takers That's Moti Lal Oswal saying a 10 to 15% price correction in premium properties is very much on the cards and given the economic green shoots H and I have started betting big on commercial real estate. With that, time for a short break. On the other side, we tell you how builders and cement companies are once again at war. Stay tuned.